I'm Juita Gupta, and this is The Pulse. How can you manage? It's a question many a blind person gets asked. Sighted people often find it astonishing that blind people accomplish just as much as someone sighted. But when it comes to parenting, it's harder to put some of those fears and questions to rest. How does a blind mother keep track of her rambunctious toddler? How can a blind dad take his preschooler to the park or teach them to ride a bike? How can blind parents keep their children safe in our dangerous world? Blind parents parent, I suspect, much as sighted parents do, with patience and creativity and making the odd mistake. Parenting is never straightforward, and no two parents, regardless of ability, go about raising their kids exactly the same way. Today, we discuss blindness and parenting. It's time to put your finger on the pulse. Hello and welcome to The Pulse on AMI-audio. I hope you are nearly as excited as I am about this particular episode. I've been talking to my guest for about... Oh gosh, I want to say eight months now, 10 months now, trying to arrange a conversation with her about blindness and parenting. Many of you know that I am fully blind. It's an identity that I feel more or less pretty comfortable with, but I'm not going to lie to you. I have a lot of questions and a lot of fear when it comes to thinking about how exactly I, or for that matter, somebody else who's blind, actually goes about being a parent, especially to an infant or a really small child, because I feel like they run around everywhere and get into everything. And then I realized that of the many people I have the privilege of knowing, and whose wonderful lives I vicariously look at by uh, following them on Facebook, my guest today is in fact the awesome mother of now three teenagers. She is totally blind and has some degree of hearing loss, but that has never let Ashley, but that has never held Ashley Nemeth back. Ashley is, of course, a well-known voice on this network, and I'm really delighted that Ashley is joining me on The Pulse for the very first time. Ashley, hello and welcome to the program. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we can finally talk today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to, excited to chat. So you have three children. How old are they? I do. So my three kids now are 16, 17, and 20. Wow. Uh, so some 20 odd years ago, when you uh, first realized that you were going to become a mother, what were your feelings like in that moment? Were you excited? Were you nervous? What was going through your mind? Yeah, I think, you know, I was really excited, you know, at the prospect of, of becoming a mother and what that would look like. I'll be honest, like I never even thought about I'm blind. How will I do this? Um but, you know, it was a really exciting time, exciting time for us. Mm. So, you know, I mean, uh, that that question of I'm blind, how am I going to do this is a question that I ask myself 20 times a day when I contemplate becoming a parent myself. I have a lot of fear around it. Uh, but it's something that it sounds like you weren't really all that worried about. Uh, what 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 made you be less worried about it? I'm not sure, to be honest. Maybe I was, um, you know, ignorance is bliss, maybe. Uh, but I just, you know, didn't <laughs> uh, didn't really consider it. Now I think it also kind of you know, is is the type of person that I am. I don't really worry about things until I'm in the middle of it. Um, sometimes a downfall, sometimes a positive, um, you know, so I just kind of, you know, went with it. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's different for everyone. I have a lot of blind friends who say, you know, they think through all of these situations and, um, you know, can't figure out for themselves, you know, how they would deal with it or how they would go about it. And I don't think, you know, anybody, you know, cited, or, you know, whatever, wherever you are, whatever your abilities are, you know, wherever you are in life, I don't think anyone's ever prepared to be a parent. <laughs> it's true. And I'm one of those blind people that likes to overthink every situation. And I'll try and plan for every contingency, what kind of schooling my prospective kids will have. Should I be saving for their university? What sort of hobby should I make sure they get to pursue? And my husband is like, no, you're really overthinking it. Just let it go. Let it go. Like, it's, you don't have to overthink it so much. Uh, when you told your friends and family uh, about the fact that you 
you were pregnant. Um, now, of course, I'm sure the the second and third time people must have been, you know, but at least the first time around, were there, was there anyone who was surprised or concerned? What kind of reaction did you get? Yeah, I think there was concern around, you know, how would that work with me? You know, at that time, I had some usable vision. So I was still considered, you know, legally blind. I used a cane. Um, there was some concern around, you know, what would that look like? How would that, you know, work out? Uh, would I need help? How much help would I need? Those types of things. Um, I think a lot of people were not super interested in having that conversation with me at that time. You know, 20... Oh, well then with whom? Um, you know, like extended family members for sure. Mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. you know... One of the things that we didn't talk about when I was growing up and when I was younger was uh, my blindness. Like it was just something that was there but was never spoken about. Um, and so there was conversations that happened, uh, you know, amongst my family that didn't necessarily include me. Um, but I mean, it, it's an interesting, you know, dynamic. And I think, you know, so much has changed over the last 20 years that, um, you know, had I been getting the news now, it would be something that we would talk about. Mm, that's interesting just to see how things have evolved in the last 20 years or so. Uh, you know, setting aside family and friends for a moment, uh, what sort of reception did you get from uh, the OBGYN and the, the do- at the doctor's office? Uh, you know, usually women are said, you know, are told congratulations, you're expecting. Uh, but when it's a person with a disability, sometimes the response from the medical profession can get a little more complicated. What was your experience? Initially, when I seen my family doctor, there was no reaction outside of that typical, you know, congratulations and, you know, working through it. I didn't face any of that, any of the discrimination, I guess, until I was in the hospital, um, having my first, my first child. Um, and it really caught me by surprise because it hadn't been something that anybody said anything to me about throughout my entire pregnancy. Um, I had the same family doctor from the time I was a young child and so she very much knew you know what I was capable of and then how I lived my life um and she never you know brought up any kind of concern um and then like I said when I was in the hospital and you know holding my new my first child that's when you know those questions came in came into play but who was it that was sort of asking the questions if you don't mind me asking yeah so after my daughter was born the next day a social worker came into my hospital room um and started asking a lot of questions about how i was going to take care of the child how i was you know running through scenarios on what was i going to do who was going to be there to help me um a lot of things and finally you know it started to register to me what the actual question was um and the question was like, how was I going to do this as, as a blind person? And was it safe for me to leave the hospital with my child? And thankfully I had, you know, family in my corner um, to, to support me and to, to kind of shut it down. But had I not had that support, I don't know that I would have left the hospital with my child. There was a lot of concern from the social workers that I was blind and how was I going to get this child to doctor's appointments and how was I going to take care of their day-to-day needs? Um, And it was a really tough, um, a really tough couple of days um, after my first daughter was born. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you're adjusting to having a newborn and then you have this whole other thing on top of it. Do you think that there was an opportunity there to work with the social work in the hospital and with other practitioners in the hospital to make them a little more understanding of the reality of being blind? I mean, how do you get the child to doctor's appointments? Presumably the same way you would get yourself to a doctor's appointment with some minor tweaks here and there. And, you know, you do all your day-to-day tasks by yourself. There's very little hand-holding, I would imagine. So is there an opportunity there or did you think there was an opportunity there to change a few attitudes along the way? Yeah, definitely. And I, you know, I am definitely someone who will always kind of speak up and say, 
no, hang on a second. Um, you know, and so a lot of my answers to them were that I was able to get to all of my, you know, prenatal care appointments while I was pregnant. Um, you know, I got to the hospital <laughs> to, you know, to have the child some way, um, you know, things like that. And so I think because they don't didn't know anyone or hadn't and um encountered this before they just didn't know and so i ended up having to really you know explain what to me would be simple day-to-day -day things like making a bottle picking out clothes like how would i do those things and you're right like the same way that i would do them for myself yeah um, you know, there's so many parenting books out there, so much advice on the internet now. I, you know, it was probably a lot of advice 20 years ago, too, frankly. Uh, how much of that applied to you as a blind mother? Or did you have to reinvent some of that advice to make it work for you? Yeah, I think, I don't know that I ever came across anything that was geared towards parents with disabilities of any kind. You know, I know nowadays there there's a lot out there. But one thing I will say is that no matter your ability or where you're at, when it comes to parenting, everyone has an opinion on how you should do it. Um, and unfortunately, it's something that you really have to figure out for yourself. And none of those books <laughs> will prepare you for what you're like going to enter into and what your reality is. Um, so I think it was kind of nice to know once i had my daughter and you know we got into things like anything i read just went out the window <laughs> and i was just <laughs> left to kind of like figure this out without a manual right uh you said there's a lot more information out there today than there was 20 years ago uh, and it got me thinking about the role of the cnib and other agencies that work with the blind um i know some 20 years ago when i was a university student uh, somebody came out and they did all these orientation and mobility classes with me and they still do uh, and, you know, the, they did all these independent living skills, you know, the cooking, the cleaning, the sewing a button on. Um, were there classes or somebody who could come and actually help you uh, to learn how to manage with a newborn in particular? No, there. I never had anyone who um, who came out to help me with dealing with a newborn specifically. I also, you know, had the orientation and mobility classes and, you know, the cooking and independent living skills for sure um, in high school. And so I was pretty, you know, comfortable in my day to day life. But when it came to the newborn stuff, there wasn't really anyone specifically who came out to to assist or, you know, help me navigate that space. So then what did you end up changing about the way you did things around the house to make it safer and you know and also to just to make it possible for you to successfully parent um not three young children of course they're teenagers now i'm sure that brings a whole set of other challenges but when they were very small uh, what were some of your tips and tricks that got you through yeah. uh, some of their early years you know i think i just came up with ways that would ensure you know their safety first and foremost the nice thing about newborns is that they don't move. And so the newborn phase for someone who's blind yeah. <laughs> is super easy. Um, you know, they're stationary. Uh, they cry when they're, you know, needing something. So it's, it's actually set up perfect for blind people. Um, when they become toddlers <laughs> uh, or, you know, old enough to move, that's when <laughs> things got uh, got interesting. So, you know, it was a matter of ensuring that the house was baby proofed very well um and you know figuring little things out so when my children were really little and they started to move more um especially when they started to walk that's when things really <laughs> got a little precocious there for some time um but i found shoes that had squeakers in the bottom of them and they just come out and it was and I was like, that's amazing. And so I got my kids these little squeaker slippers and they would wear them around the house. And I, it drove me nuts, um, to be honest. But 
it was easy for me to like <laughs> keep track of them. If the squeaking stopped, that's when you knew they were getting into something. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was one of them. When we would go to the park, um, you know, with the kids, it was in some ways it, being a blind parent helped in that I didn't have the luxury of taking the kids to the park and, you know, sitting on a bench and just watching. I had to play with my kids and climb the things with them and, you know, kind of be close enough that I could touch them so that I knew that they were safe and, you know, what they were doing. And so that's what we did. And, and for my kids, it was normal. And as they, you know, became verbal and, you know, could communicate some, it really became about communication. So I'd be like, where are you? And like, my kids knew from a very, very, very young age that if I asked that question, they had to answer mm -hmm. or we left. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> it became really about, you know, communicating with the kids and I never hid it from them. They learned quickly on their own. And then as they got a little bit older and you're you know, trying to explain things to them, it was like, mom can't see you if you do this. Right. Or if you, you know, leave from here, I can't see you. And so our kids um, knew that they had to hold my hand when we were walking um, or, you know, they had to hang on to the stroller or they, you know, had to be within an arm's reach of me at all times. And when I say that now, some people are like, well, that's, you know, must have been terrible for your kids. But the reality is, is that as we were walking down the street and holding hands, like we would, you know, have conversations and, you know, play little games. And like, it never was a bad thing for them. It was normal. No. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, it's not, it's not the death sentence that many people might think it is. Uh, when your kids got to school, did you have to have any conversations with their teachers and uh, other people about how you know you would tackle worksheets or things that they brought home uh, if those were on paper or formats that weren't accessible to you? Yeah, school, my kids being in school is, is just as much of a challenge um, as a parent who is blind as it was going through school as a child who was blind in that things just were not accessible and made it really difficult for me to be involved in the children's education. And so I, I feel like I haven't figured that one out completely. I have one child who's already graduated and one who's graduating this year and one graduating next year. And I feel like I'm still fighting that battle. Um, you know, a lot of the apps and systems that the school board or the school division here uses in Saskatchewan are not accessible um and so I've really had to have a lot of conversations and advocate for my children but also for myself to be able to be involved in their education and, and help them where needed and um you know help them to be successful um and I think some of those conversations are you know pretty blunt and honest and you know, going, there's always someone higher. And so I've, you know, had to climb that ladder a few times to, you know, be able to be involved. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I'm in my mid thirties now, and one of the reasons I've put off having children is not because I don't have someone to have kids with. I mean, I've been married 10 years. So if I'd had to have children, I would have had them by now. But one of the questions I've found myself wrestling with is, uh, I have a congenital eye condition. And if I have children, there's a 50% chance I'm going to pass it on to my kids. And is that something I should or could do? Because, you know, it's all well and good to say, and I don't at all discount it when I say this, that a disability is a valuable and powerful thing. And it's something that one should take a lot of pride in and not shrink from your disability. But then when you start to think about your kids having a disability and knowing that the world is slow to change, Am I fair to set up a child for a lifetime of discrimination or dealing with inaccessible systems and you know all kinds of other problems that come with being uh, that 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 come from living in a world that doesn't prioritize access for the blind and for other people with disabilities? Is that a question that you find yourself wrestling with at all? Yes, very much so. Um, my condition is also congenital, and um, you know my kids had the. 50% chance that they were going to, you know, inherit that. 
And it was definitely something that I thought about often, um, you know, and hoped that they wouldn't have to endure kind of the fight that I've had, you know, my whole life. Um, and so, you know, and it's also a question that people ask all the time when I say I have kids and they're like, are they blind too? And none of my kids actually inherited uh, my eye condition. In fact, only one of them wears glasses and it's like a reading prescription. So I don't know how that happened, but you know, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> um, but interestingly, one of my children is on the autism spectrum. And so although none of my kids inherited my eye condition, one of my children, you know, has a disability in, in being on the autism spectrum. And it is something that, you know, as he's gotten older, has been something that I struggled with because I have to fight so hard for everything that I need in work, in personal life, you know, in everything because like you said the world is just not set up for someone who's blind that now that i'm also fighting for him in his schooling and you know have been you know he's in grade 11 now and so have been fighting for him for many years um it's exhausting and you know it's something that i've had to be conscious of and sometimes i've had to say i can't fight that battle right now you know, because as as we all know, for people who live, um, who experience disability, it it is something that we always have to consider. Because whenever you're advocating for yourself and you're fighting for these things, it takes a mental toll on a person. Um, and so it is something that I've really had to be mindful of um, and be careful with. Of course, I think the days of wearing squeaker slippers are far behind you. Your kids are now teenagers. You know, how do you make sure they don't uh, sneak out or something in the middle of the night? I know at least one cousin who had a rope ladder and she used to shimmy down the side of the house and disappear in the, in the middle of the night and go off with her friends. Um, it, it, that All that to say, now that your kids are not infants and they're not little toddlers anymore, uh, what are some of the joys and challenges of being a parent to teenagers as someone who's blind? Well, I think in 20 years, I'll probably be able to talk about the joys of parenting teenagers. Um, <laughs> right now, I'm being smack in the middle of it. Some days I'm, I struggle to find the joys. Um, you know, it's definitely the challenges I feel as a parent are much larger with teenagers than when they were little, because I could just put squeaker shoes on them or ensure that they were close by or, you know, put them in a playpen, like, and keep them contained. And now, as my kids have gotten older, even though they're great kids and, you know, they understand that I can't see them, for sure they've taken advantage of it. 100%. <laughs> and I don't blame them, you know? I would have done the same thing. Um, and, you know... Um some of the times it's funny um now luckily for me our son has tried to sneak out but my husband will hear like the slightest movement of the door so um he's kind of like the watchdog when it comes to kids sneaking out um which has been great and i also think now with like cameras on doors kids are less likely because you can see them on the camera yeah <laughs> if they try if they try to leave that's right. Um, so, you know, <laughs> that's been interesting. I definitely, as they've gotten older, I think they've tried more and more to kind of pull things over on me. Um, but I think your parent, your parental instincts kind of, you know, kick in and you're like, something's not right. Um, you know, and eventually they'll tell me, you know, what's actually going on, you know, I've definitely had a couple of kids try to, you know, sneak kids in the house late at night or, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, I think, I think all kids will try, but I think it's just like, no matter if you have a disability or not, your kids will try, right? They're going to, that's the thing. They're going to push the boundaries and, you know, what can it's they all about being with? a teenager. That's the whole point of being a teenager is, is pushing yeah. the boundaries, right? <laughs> yeah. More than my kids pushing the boundaries. I, one of the, 
benefits that I've seen of my kids growing up with a mother who is blind and who they've seen fight for things, you know, in my career and in my personal life as they've grown up. All three of my children are very empathetic and compassionate. And so not that they are not teenagers and say some probably terrible things. Um, I will say that difference, dif like people with differences or disability, my kids are very empathetic and always think of everyone else. And, you know, if they ever had classmates who had disabilities, they were the first ones to help them be included and, you know, have kept that as they've gotten older. And so I think my kids have gained that because of my disability and, you know, seeing, you know, what I've had to go through. So I would like to say that as they've grown, they've become decent human beings. Um, some days as teenagers is questionable, but for the most part, <laughs> I think, you know, it is a, it is a benefit. It is. I mean, that's a wonderful place to leave it, but I do have to ask one last question and we only have about a minute for you to answer it. For anyone in my position, you know, should I or shouldn't I, I'm, a first, I'm blind, fully blind like you, and I'm teetering on this question of whether or not to become a parent. What is your advice? My advice is to take the blindness out of it. Does your life, do you want children? And does your life style allow you to fulfill that? If the answer is yes to both of those things and you can afford children nowadays and you want children, um, I say take the blindness out of it. Um, I think, you know, we all know that people who are blind, we all know, all of us blind people know that, you know, blind people are very, very capable of, of many, many things and of, you know, anything they put their mind to. And I think parenting is, is one of those things. And it's a great joy. It's got its tough times and its challenges, but it's, it's a huge, you know, joy to be able to be a parent. Ashley, thank you very much. It's been it it has it's been so uplifting and wonderful speaking to you. I'm so glad you could take a little bit of time out of your afternoon to chat with me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was super mom Ashley Nemeth, parent to three teenagers, sharing her journey as a parent who is blind. And I really liked what she said there at the end about taking the blindness out of it. And I think I'm gonna, you know, take that advice with me, not just when it comes to parenting, but in life. Uh, if there's something that you want, be it kids or a career or a hobby that you want to pursue, take the blindness out of it and go for it. That's all the time we have uh, with Ashley today, and it was just unfortunate because I could have kept right on talking to her. But if you have any feedback about my conversation, feel free to write us at feedback at ami.ca. Find us on X at AMI Audio. Use the hashtag PulseAMI. Pick up the phone and give us a call. Share your parenting journey with us. You can give us a call at 1-866-509-4545. That's 1-866-509-4545. And don't forget to leave permission to play the audio on the program. This week, our videographer has been Matthew McGurk. Jordan Steves is our uh, video editor. Mark Aflalo is our technical producer. Ryan Delahanty is our podcast coordinator at AMI Audio. Andy Frank is a manager for AMI Audio. And I've been your host, Juwita Gupta. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>